Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We are very excited to kick off what we hope to be the first of many of these events. Uh, tonight, uh, I, you are going to have myself. I am Jordan Kruger, and you are joined, uh, or I'm joined by my fellow co founder, Jeff Garzik, as well as Phil Gomes, who's the head of uh, communications for Vesper. And uh, we are really excited. This is, like I said, we hope to have more of these in the future. And uh, as I'm sure everybody is aware, we had our beta launch yesterday. And I, what I'm really excited about is just all of the engagement and the conversations that we are having on the Discord. And it has been really an exciting couple of days for us. And we really appreciate all of the feedback that we've received. And we have also set up a Discord channel specifically for this feedback. So please, please, please keep the feedback coming. We are reading this. We are really wanting to continue to build out a bigger, better product. So we're taking all of your feedback to heart. So thank you very much for everything that you've provided so far. Um, and we're going to continue to the dialogue that we're having on the Discord, answer some of the questions that you've had in the past 24 hours, and really take a deeper dive into Vesper tonight. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jeff now to provide this uh, deep dive into Vesper. Thanks, Jordan. And uh, hello, Vesper community. Uh, I'm Jeff Garzik, uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Vesper, along with Jordan. Um, and uh, I'm really, uh, uh, truly honored, humbled, and blessed to uh, uh, be uh, trusted with uh, the, the assets that have been uh, deposited into our beta test for the, uh, the past 24 to uh, heading on 48 hours. Um, the, uh, the, the response has really been very positive. I am uh, uh, looking forward to briefing the community on uh, what we've uh, released, what we're uh, going to uh, expect in the beta. And uh, then I'll uh, also uh, talk about uh, engagement with the community and uh, how the community can participate. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, I'll uh, share my screen. We're going to go through a presentation that's uh, part briefing about uh, what Vesper is, and then a briefing about uh, the beta. And then we'll go through uh, your questions and answers uh, finally at the end. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been uh, talking nonstop to uh, a lot of Vesper uh, partners recently. Uh, so hopefully my voice will, uh, will not give out. Uh, but uh, with that, uh, let's kick it off. Uh, it, this should take, I'm guessing, uh, maybe 60 minutes. We might run over a little bit. Uh, that's uh, the estimate. All right. There we go. Uh, so uh, hello to uh, uh, and welcome to the very first Vesper community call. Uh, again, uh, we're going to be looking to have community members uh, solicit or uh, provide their feedback. And we really want to engage people before the Vesper launch so that uh, you have a chance to provide inputs on the product, provide inputs on the, the user experience, provide inputs on uh, tokenomics, governance, uh, other key details that uh, other DeFi projects uh, really don't uh, let you uh, have a chance to uh, have feedback on uh, alter, etc. <clears throat> so uh, we're going over the uh, introduction to uh, Vesper, give you an overview on products and the overall project. What are the expectations for the Vesper beta? What are some of the early reactions? And then finally, uh, we're going to uh, answer community questions that were submitted on our Discord. <clears throat> So uh, Vesper at a uh, high level organizationally is a spin out from Block, which is a uh, blockchain infrastructure firm. 
Um, it was uh, co-founded by uh, myself and Matthew Rozak in uh, late 2015, early 2016. Um, we have a uh, team that is uh, dedicated to Vesper uh, on the uh, engineering side, as well as uh, on the marketing side, we uh, uh, use uh, uh, part-time uh, some uh, of the uh, block resources to augment the Vesper team. So that's, that's kind of the, uh, the shape uh, coming into this. So uh, Block uh, did self-fund this. Uh, we did, we're not uh, uh, asking for outside capital to, out, bleh, I told you it's late. We're not asking for outside capital to uh, go and build this. This is built. This is built. This is audited. We are actively uh, testing it right now. So uh, we're going to go over the products. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Vesper VSP token, which uh, leads into uh, the governance picture of the Vesper DAO. So what are Vesper's uh, products and uh, the overall project? Um, initially, uh, I uh, urge everyone to uh, read our core principles post. Uh, the, uh, the four principles here are uh, uh, in, embedded in every single product that uh, we want to release. Uh, longevity is uh, uh, obviously a key. This is not something that uh, you'll yield farm for two weeks and then go away. Uh, we're put, releasing products that are uh, targeted at users who will uh, be in, uh, these as, uh, in these pools longer term. And uh, so we've tuned the incentives in that particular direction. Quality, and uh, we'll explain uh, specific points later, is uh, just uh, bringing standard uh, software engineering practices best practices uh, to uh, everything we do. Uh, we want to build trust with uh, you, the users and uh, developers in our community. And uh, every uh, product that uh, we build is uh, uh, necessitates uh, some level of trust. And so uh, whether it's uh, the permissionless nature of the smart contracts or the audit or the way we engage with the community, uh, all of those are uh, moving towards uh, that uh, pillar of trust. And then finally, uh, we're nothing without community. And so uh, this call, for example, is our first, uh, is our first uh, touch point to the community. And uh, we're going to be uh, looking for both developers and non-developers uh, to uh, provide feedback, to engage and join with what is uh, an open source project. This is uh, not just about us. Um, it is uh, our uh, first opening uh, of the doors to a wider community and inviting people in. <clears throat> our uh, first product is uh, holding pools. And uh, this is a uh, pretty familiar uh, DeFi primitive if you've uh, been involved in DeFi. Uh, but we also hope that uh, this DeFi primitive and uh, the user experience that we've engineered is going to be something that uh, brings in uh, new DeFi users, gives uh, institutional uh, users an additional level of comfort and trust. And uh, while we, we love our, our crypto uh, friends or, or crypto degens, uh, the, the DeFi experts of the world, uh, we think that there's a, a much wider audience for DeFi as well. Uh, DeFi is, uh, it, it is a word and uh, it's, it's maybe hyped quite a bit, but it is incredibly freeing and incredibly fundamental to uh, how our uh, future world is going to be shaped. Um, as uh, Xiao Wang uh, mentioned on Twitter, the DeFi fundamentally says there are no walled garden products. Uh, users uh, today might go to log into fidelity.com or vanguard.com and they'll access uh, uh, financial products from that login, from that website, uh, from that centralized website. Fundamentally, DeFi turns that on its head and says that uh, products can be released by anyone. And it's the fundamental experience around the user wallet, the crypto wallet, that uh, brings all of these products from many different vendors 
together into one place. So that's that's really what uh, DeFi, uh, why DeFi is really exciting, why it uh, breaks down barriers and uh, is uh, really exciting to us at Vesper. Um, so that's why we uh, put together our first product. Uh, quick briefing on uh, the first product, holding pools, is a very basic pattern. Uh, deposit a token and earn compounding interest in that token. Deposit ETH, earn ETH interest. Deposit BTC, earn BTC interest. With the first three holding pools serving the ETH, WBTC, and USDC holding pool. As you can see right now on uh, Vesper.finance. It's a uh, yield aggregator. So uh, we're not a lending platform. We are sourcing yield from uh, other lending platforms, trading platforms uh, with a <clears throat> uh, any yield source that uh, meets our uh, conservative risk level. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, it uh, approaches what is uh, an idealized, quote unquote, risk-free rate. Now, uh, obviously to explain, there is no risk-free rate. Uh, that is a, a term of art, uh, specifically referring to uh, there's no volatility risk. Uh, there's always uh, some risk involved in crypto, but uh, what we're targeting is no volatility risk. Your balance, uh, increases, it's not uh, decreasing, and there's no uh, impermanent loss. Um, the risk levels that uh, we're offering uh, today on the site, we have the uh, conservative risk level, and this uh, sources yield from well-known, well-tested components such as your Compound, your Aave, your MakerDAO. Uh, those are DeFi components and projects that are seasoned. They have time in market, they have transaction volume in the market, they've uh, kind of survived a uh, real money uh, trial by fire over the months and years. And uh, they themselves have become trusted DeFi components. So uh, we source uh, the conservative uh, risk level yield from those type of components. The other side of the coin is aggressive risk level. An aggressive risk level is the opposite. It is a higher risk yield source, but obviously that's uh, going to uh, result in higher yield. So those are the risk levels. Uh, the uh, audience of uh, the conservative risk levels and conservative pools is uh, really uh, holders who are just looking to uh, hold ETH long-term, hold BTC long-term. They're not trading in and out every day. They're just looking to uh, compound their crypto. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, with the aggressive audience, is uh, that's really targeted at uh, you know v crypto experts, people who are comfortable with that risk, um, and will uh, flag those uh, pools appropriately when we roll them out. And then finally, uh, as with uh, all of the components, uh, we uh, hold ourselves up to high quality standards. We uh, have a lot of testing uh, off mainnet. We have uh, private real money testing on mainnet. We have a staged rollout. This beta test uh, right now is part of that staged rollout. We are uh, rolling out a uh, select number of products. We're uh, having a wider beta test. And uh, if uh, all goes well, these three pools will be the the uh, production pools that we uh, launch with after the beta period. So that staged rollout is part of standard software engineering, standard end-to-end uh, -end testing type practices. And we're extending that to the economic sphere. We're extending that not only to software code, but because blockchains and smart contracts are money as well as technology, we have to apply those same testing concepts to uh, our uh, assets under management inside of uh, Vesper. So those are that was the first product and uh, we're releasing the uh, three holding pools uh, that you see on the, the slide in the website right now. Uh, we have uh, a number of other products which are uh, not specifically yield aggregator or yield farming, but uh, more generally it's about 
programming and automating the uh, DeFi yield machinery. And so uh, here's a, a quick peek at the future. Um, I'm not going to dive into uh, deep detail on this slide, but I'm happy to talk about uh, this on the Discord. Um, in uh, the Vesper core, uh, we have a, a more complicated, uh, more uh, flexible set of uh, pool strategies coming out such that multiple strategies uh, can be uh, applied to a single pool. That's, uh, that's the long-term shape uh, that uh, our smart contracts will take. And that's uh, something that uh, I think is going to ultimately be something that comes to all vaults across all of DeFi. Uh, we'll have, uh, and, and again, uh, not going uh, into deep detail, uh, just uh, kind of hinting at uh, some of these features. Uh, we'll have front pools and back pools associated with that. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll have more strategies. We have several yield strategies in audit right now that uh, will be, uh, as soon as they're out of audit, and uh, they'll move into uh, private testing and then to uh, public testing. So similar to how current holding pools have moved into this current beta test, our new yield strategies, and I, I won't get into detail as to which uh, strategies, uh, those will roll out probably on a uh, monthly basis as they uh, leave audit. So holding pools uh, in the future, uh, we'll see uh, more cryptos. Uh, we'll see some stable coins, but uh, here's, here's kind of where uh, I'll uh, do a shout out to uh, Yearn, is that uh, we're looking at uh, at least one strategy to uh, aggregate yield from a popular project called Yearn. And uh, they have a, a stable coin focus to uh, some extent. And uh, we uh, really like focusing on the, uh, the cryptos and sort of the deposit ETH, earn ETH, deposit BTC, earn BTC type pattern. Uh, version two, which is released after beta, there'll be a governance token, that's the VSP token. There'll be a governance and rev share pool that uh, you stake against. And uh, stakers in the VVSP pool receive 95% of all system revenue uh, through uh, that uh, rev share and governance pool. And this is uh, the governance system is based off the uh, what's quickly becoming an industry standard, the compound governance module. This is a well known, audited, battle tested uh, component. Uh, over to the uh, right side um, is a new DeFi primitive that uh, um, people are perhaps uh, much less familiar with. This is a deposit one token and earn a different token type of pattern. And uh, this is where Vesper starts to get into the interesting parts of programming and automating the yield is that uh, this enables uh, users in the two examples given to uh, deposit ETH and then the Vesper machinery behind the scenes generates yield from uh, the yield strategies. And then uh, we pay out in uh, USD. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, uh, again, going back to uh, crypto holders uh, who just wanna hold ETH or hold BTC, this allows a uh, crypto holder to hold their crypto ETH and receive US dollars for their daily spending. So that's something that it's, it's not yield farming. It's uh, something different. It's a tool that makes your crypto more useful. Uh, other components that we have are uh, a pool factory. This is uh, where not just the Vesper team, but anybody can match a Vesper strategy with an ERC-20 token on Ethereum and uh, create their own pool. It's similar to a uh, Balancer Labs type user experience. And then finally, specifically for developers, we are uh, staging the release through GitHub. We've already posted uh, a few things and uh, we will eventually have 100% of the system 
uh, all uh, documents, uh, UI source code, smart contracts, et cetera, uh, on GitHub. Of course, the, uh, the pool smart contracts are already on Etherscan, but we'll be uh, putting them in a uh, GitHub repo as well. And then uh, if you're uh, quick, you can probably read the Skunk Works at the uh, bottom of the screen. Uh, I hope you did. So this is uh, the uh, Vesper ecosystem. Um, after uh, the beta test, when we launched the uh, Vesper VSP token, uh, the VSP token is uh, kind of the, uh, the rug that really ties the room together. So uh, the fees that are coming from these pools they uh, go to uh, what's labeled on this uh, slide is the treasury box. Uh, the treasury box will unwrap those pool tokens and then uh, buy back Vesper on chain through Uniswap at spot prices. So why does it do that? Well, this creates a daily buying pressure for the VSP token and shares that revenue, as you see on the screen, with the uh, VVSP pool, the governance and revenue pool. So uh, now this is one of two long-term uh, plans to ensure that Vesper is sustainable. Um, sustainability means that it's not just a, a farm and dump here today, gone tomorrow platform, but something that really is going to uh, survive year after year after year. Uh, revenue is part of that sustainability project, as is engaging external developers. So uh, over and above uh, a revenue split, which you see here on the screen, uh, which we'll uh, offer to developers, we uh, at uh, Vesper have thought through a risk adjusting staircase, such that when a developer walks in with uh, a smart contract with a uh, a wonderful yield strategy. We want to uh, give them every bit of support we can uh, over and above just revenue. We want to pay for source code audits. We want to uh, enable uh, and provide test resources for private testing, for back testing, for mainnet fork testing. And then the Vesper project will provide test liquidity, actual money to uh, test those uh, pool strategies in uh, real money field testing. So the developer strategy, the revenue strategy, we feel is uh, very important. And uh, you know, not to, not to beat a horse too much, but that's, that's why we're having this call, is uh, to engage the community, to let them know that uh, the community around which uh, Vesper forms is uh, really going to be the lifeblood of the project uh, year on and year out. So we're very excited to uh, talk more about that in the uh, coming uh, days and weeks. So uh, to the beta, what are the uh, expectations and what is some of the early reaction? So uh, part of one of the uh, Vesper pillars, quality, Beta testing is a uh, necessity. It's standard software engineering. Uh, the beta is tested by the beta, uh, excuse me, by the Vesper team, and it's audited by two auditors. The beta test is going to continue until it's ready. That's, that's your uh, wise uh, software engineering answer. We estimate that to be uh, two to four weeks. Uh, the beta pools will become production pools, so you don't have to move your assets unless uh, some uh, black swan event occurs. That's why we have the test period. The VSP token is not yet deployed. The governance system is not yet deployed. So uh, governance is uh, currently uh, via multisig. Deposits might be paused if uh, we uh, exceed uh, 25 million in a short period of time. That's the, uh, the, the very successful test case. Uh, deposits and withdrawals might be paused if there's uh, some sort of black swan event. Calculating beta rewards, and there'll be uh, some more information on that in future slides. 
Uh, the clock started December 22nd at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, specifically Ethereum block uh, number given there. Uh, there are uh, 100K VSP allocated per pool. And uh, so if, uh, for example, a lot of people are in one pool and not another, uh, it, uh, that doesn't change. And 100% of that will be uh, claimable on day zero. Uh, the VSP is uh, not locked. And finally, uh, you can expect uh, continuous uh, UI updates. Uh, we're very excited about uh, some of the current design rounds that uh, we have uh, seen in the office and uh, the community is about to see. So uh, expect uh, continual updates as we uh, get closer and closer to uh, V2 production launch. So uh, what are some of the reactions and outcomes? Uh, in terms of uh, our status board and launch status, the uh, contracts uh, all green, the app all green. Uh, we had uh, some hiccups on the uh, website side, get working out some DNS issues that uh, were resolved today. Uh, so our, uh, our status monitors, our alarm monitors went from yellow to green as well. And uh, communication uh, is uh, all green. So uh, really, uh, uh, you know, obviously we want to engineer the beta to uh, be trouble free and it's uh, been uh, darn near trouble free. So uh, again, uh, you know, humbled and blessed. Uh, to uh, some of the feedback from the community, this is what the community has told us so far. Uh, both uh, requests for information, uh, you know, compliments, criticisms, uh, et cetera. Uh, so I'll skim these. Uh, rewards details, uh, more details about uh, the uh, beta rewards and uh, the sort of the denominator and uh, how those are calculated. Uh, yield display. Uh, units, whether it's a sort of daily, weekly, uh, yearly yield, and uh, the denominated uh, 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 denomination, excuse me, whether that's in uh, ETH or USD, BTC or USD, uh, that actually matters. As a, a little bit of trivia, some other yield sites, they will uh, show the APY in US dollar terms, which is, which is just fine except that that will show that the pool is earning uh, maybe more than it is because the US exchange rate just changed. So uh, we're uh, looking for uh, the community's feedback here. Uh, what do you want to see? What, uh, what is the easiest uh, units and, and, and set of numbers to uh, digest and uh, help you plan and use the product? So uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, compliments, uh, private and public, about uh, that uh, the UI was easy to use and super smooth. And uh, that was absolutely one of the goals. We uh, want Vesper to be reachable by a wider audience. We want Vesper to be uh, usable in ways that uh, some of the other crypto sites are perhaps uh, harder to use. Uh, having been in crypto myself for over 10 years, the user experience has always been uh, not good and a bit uh, too techie centric, perhaps. And uh, with Vesper, we want to push back on that. We want to make it as easy for uh, the average person to use. Um, some of the, there were uh, some uh, user side uh, wallet issues. Uh, as in, uh, it wasn't uh, a problem on Vesper side, but again, we're always looking for ways to improve. And so maybe we can improve our documentation or, or our examples and uh, help uh, users uh, avoid those uh, problems on their side. Uh, and along, along with that, uh, something that I'd really like to see, and I'd, uh, I'm soliciting uh, the community's help with, is uh, for users that are new to DeFi, uh, some user guides for using say MetaMask and depositing into a pool or using Ledger and depositing, uh, uh, just using the Vesper pools. Uh, those uh, you know, 10 minute user guides or, or 30 second TikToks, 
are, uh, are absolutely of value. And that's definitely a way that the community can uh, contribute. Uh, more, uh, more charts and graphs. We got several requests for that. Uh, we're working on it, uh, absolutely. Uh, another request was for a, a summary page or, or a pool summary page. Uh, we're working on that as well. Um, improve the mobile experience. And then uh, there were a lot of, uh, hey, uh, add this yield source or that yield source. So uh, some, great feed, uh, some great early feedback coming in. Um, you're uh, welcome to uh, submit the feedback in private, but we'd really love you to uh, join the Discord, join the beta feedback channel and uh, participate there. So uh, a special bonus for uh, those who uh, tuned into our uh, very first Vesper call is uh, we're going to give uh, this audience a preview of the uh, tokenomics and governance, which has uh, been a uh, topic of uh, frequent request on the Discord. So uh, this is a not finalized draft, but uh, we wanted to uh, basically give the community an idea of the shape that uh, we're planning. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we're giving this uh, a preview with the specific intent that the community, again, provides feedback. This is a really unique opportunity to be in the room before these numbers are etched in stone. Most DeFi projects, maybe all the DeFi projects that I'm, uh, except maybe Uni and one other, uh, all of this is signed, sealed, and delivered by the time uh, people uh, hear about it. And there's no uh, opportunity for be feedback here. Here's the preview community, and here's your opportunity for feedback. We're uh, estimating 65% uh, of the mintage to be uh, distributed to the community, uh, 3 million for uh, holding pools, and holding pools uh, is uh, not necessarily only the first three holding pools, that's just broadly the budget. So for example, the community might uh, uh, say that only the first three and uh, no other holding pools get rewards, or the community might uh, suggest let's uh, add rewards to uh, the fourth holding pool and the fifth and the sixth. Um, liquidity mining, there's uh, 1 million uh, reserved for that. And then uh, we're uh, reserving reserves. Uh, another thing that's uh, somewhat unique in DeFi, this is for the community. It will be uh, under governance, controllable by the community. And then uh, the usual uh, team advisor, uh, strategic partner uh, tranche. Um, this, uh, this final bit was something that I had to, had to elbow the uh, attorneys aside to uh, disclose, but I'm, I'm happy to uh, disclose. Um, uh, just like uh, Vesper is getting audited, Vesper has seen lots of testing. Uh, we're trying to uh, approach every angle, including regulatory, with uh, professionalism and deliberation. And uh, so I'd love to uh, provide more details, but uh, this is uh, a minimum that I think will allow the community to uh, start calculating uh, specifically their, their beta rewards, the holding pool rewards, et cetera. Um, the, uh, the vesting and therefore uh, the day zero supply will uh, be uh, one twelfth up front and then uh, streaming uh, uh, per block drip over the next 11 months. So that, uh, that gives you an idea about how the VSP tokens will be uh, entering the supply. And uh, purely for informational purposes, this is uh, the token price that's uh, being uh, shared around. So again, this is not finalized. We're soliciting the community's feedback and uh, we're happy to uh, be able to give you a preview and uh, open that opportunity for feedback. Uh, next is uh, Vesper governance. The uh, key uh, aspect is that we're using the community standard 
compound governance module. This module is, uh, has been well known, audited, battle tested, uh, et cetera. There is the uh, modulation in that, uh, for example, right now in phase one, uh, there's just a multi-sig and then you move to a governance module with a multi-sig and then you retire the multi-sig in a phased process to go all the way to uh, decentralization. Now, uh, why do we have that phased process and why not go uh, straight to uh, the governance side uh, and full decentralization is we've seen that go wrong in other projects. We've seen uh, other projects that release governance and then the governance uh, uh, limits were set to such a high bar that the project is unable to save it to vote to save itself or the project is unable to vote to uh, extend itself. And uh, as a result, uh, those projects uh, uh, ran into problems. So uh, we're uh, taking all of those lessons learned over the past summer and baking this into uh, Vesper. And again, this is a draft and we're uh, soliciting the uh, community's input. So uh, finally, I am uh, gonna stop the screen share and go to Discord and answer questions from Discord. Then we're going to wrap it up. All right. So looking at uh, the Q&A channel, wow, quite a few and since I, uh, uh, started, which is fantastic. So let's see, going to uh, <laughs> the amusingly named uh, drop table. Um, had some questions, uh, questions about the team. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we covered that a little bit earlier that uh, this is a uh, spinoff from Block, but there is a uh, team dedicated to Vesper as well. Um, the smart contracts in front end will be open sourced. Um, the uh, contracts, uh, some of them are already open sourced at Etherscan, but we're going to be putting it uh, at uh, github.com slash Vesper5. Uh, is there a bug bounty program? There is uh, uh, going to be. Uh, there isn't one right now. Um, next steps after beta, we covered that. Um, are you uh, planning on to implement some sort of boost over time for pools? This is something that uh, it's important to uh, take to governance. And so if the community wants that, then uh, absolutely. Um, is this a long-term project? Absolutely. That's one of the pillars of Vesper is longevity. Are you planning to release your front end on IPFS? At yes, that is definitely a goal. I think how uh, Uniswap uh, did their front end was uh, very smart. Um, we definitely planning on decentralizing the uh, API, but got to have something that works first. Got to be uh, practical first. Let's see, next questioner looked on, looked for a breakdown on tokenomics, which we did. Uh, the next questioner uh, asking also about tokenomics. Uh, next questioner asking about zapper.fi. So uh, we are definitely looking at uh, zapper.fi, dbank, and uh, we'd uh, solicit the community to tell us what is what are the sites that you want to see on uh, you want to see Vesper on and Vesper managing. Uh, Zapper is one of my favorites. Uh, I use Zapper a lot, uh, so we'll, we're definitely uh, going to reach out to them. Uh, let's see. Uh, question about uh, withdrawal fees. Um, one uh, observation is, uh, seems like the withdrawal fee is uh, potentially large, which uh, I definitely wanted to answer this on the Q&A. 
Uh, there are uh, other yield farms uh, out there which are taking a uh, about the same performance and or asset fees. There are, uh, number one, there's a, a performance fee or an interest fee. And uh, the market is about 10 to 30% for that. The uh, withdrawal fee, this is uh, kind of a question of, do you want a, an asset fee, a deposit fee, a withdrawal fee? Um, and uh, we went with the withdrawal fee because of the longevity but uh, definitely looking for community feedback there. And uh, if, it's a, if that's a, a big number, then we're uh, uh, interested in feedback. We're mainly looking to be competitive on the market, but uh, for longevity's sake, we uh, want to come up with a number that uh, allows you to compound your, uh, your assets the most. Um, so uh, those, are, those are most of the questions that uh, I uh, captured. Um, we'll be uh, having another beta call very soon. We'll uh, have these on a regular basis throughout the beta and then we'll slow them down for uh, production. So uh, probably uh, once a month, have a uh, community call every month. But, but again, uh, this is uh, something that's uh, a kernel of uh, what it's going to be. And it's uh, going to grow and uh, it's going to prosper because of you, the community, uh, not just us. So sign up to the Discord, uh, watch the Telegram, uh, watch the GitHub, and uh, absolutely uh, participate in the pools, give us feedback, uh, and uh, really, uh, really give it a, a once over so that we can have the best uh, project uh, at launch that we can. Uh, thank you very much for listening. If uh, this uh, briefing was of value, uh, give us a, a like on Twitter or a retweet or a share and uh, come on down and join our community. Thanks a lot and uh, good night or, or in Asia, good morning.